to the Vox Delights. In this video we're exploring a new game from Rio Grande and this game is Cinque Terre or the five villages. This is very much a Euro game and that's kind of new I guess for the channel but we should do a few more Euro games because um, it's a great genre. And I'm going to set up a two player game for you here and man it does look beautiful when it's all set up. This is the Cinque Terre board and it has the five estates, uh, the five villages here and these are five villages from this region of Italy. The aim of the game is that we're going to be travelling through these five villages and through these three areas where you can grow crops. And we're going to be harvesting crops and we're going to be selling them at villages and we're going to be fulfilling contracts in order to score the most points. So the first thing we need to do is populate these fields and there's eight fields to fill and to do so we're going to need these eight different cubes. So I'm going to grab one of each. These represent different types of crops. We've got black for olives, mushrooms, tomatoes, grapes, courgettes, lemons, oranges and garlic. And we're going to place these in a bag and this is just going to be our method of randomizing them. So we grab these and place one in each of these fields. Okay, now we've picked which field's going to grow which crop, we can place the remaining cubes here to fill those fields. And there we go. And in a two player game, there's 13 cubes in each field, and that varies on, on the number of players. We can play two to five, and for five players, it goes up to 16. So now we've shown which fields we can harvest which crops from, we need to show which villages we can sell which crops and for what price. And this is where we use our 16 dice again. We've got one colour for each type of crop. And once more, the, the setup is going to be randomised. So what we do is we grab one of each colour, place them in the bag. We want to grab four for Monterezzo. One, two, three, four, give those a roll. And this becomes our prices. So we can sell garlic, zucchini, mushrooms and oranges here. And they've all got these varying prices from six down to one. We'll grab the remaining four for real majority down here. And this is going to give us our prices for these. So you can see there's quite a lot of um, variability in the setup. We're going to do the same. We're going to grab the last eight. And we're going to grab... Three for Venaza. So we've got olives, tomatoes, and oranges. Three for Manarola. We have mushrooms, garlic, grapes, and then the final two for Corniglia. Five and four for lemons and zucchini. So we've got some good prices, zucchini up here, six, a couple of fives here, here, and a couple of ones as well. And those are going to stay that way for the rest of the game. For the players, I'm set up a two player game, so each player chooses a, a card, I've got two here, we've got the pink, the dark blue, but we've also got light blue, light brown, dark brown, those go back to the box. And these are called their fulfillment cards. As we sell produce at each different village, we're going to be placing the cubes here that we sell. This is our cart that's going to travel the region, and these are going to be our victory point tokens. And there's a quick little player aid here too on the right. Once more you determine starting player by randomising, using the randomizer bag. So we're going to have pink go first, and then blue. Before we start, we're going to deal a starting hand of four produce cards to each player. So pink, blue. And these cards determine which produce, produce cards, remember, each player can harvest. So for the blue player here, we can go harvest oranges, zucchini and tomatoes. 
The players also need some orders, and there's two types of order cards. There's a big stack here, which we've shuffled, another stack here, and this one is your starting orders. The difference is they have stars on the back here. And we're going to do just one to each player. The rest go back in the box. We don't need these for the rest of the game. So each player will place this in their hands. So for blue, for example, they have a starting order which says they need to sell tomatoes at Monterezzo, oranges at Vernazza, grapes at Coniglia, garlic, manarillo, and lemons at Rio Magoli. Okay? So that's the nature of an order, kind of like a contract. The other thing we do is deal four produce into this area of the board here. And these are going to be produce that, or new produce cards that are going to be available to the players each turn. For the start of the game, we're going to place the victory point markers down here on the 100 spot. Next, we need to deal out these orders here, our regular orders. And these are going to be orders that players can grab as they're playing, as well as the, the starting order, which remains secret in their hand. Now, you deal out a number equal to the number of players. So we've got two players, two orders here available. Finally, the most important decision for the players, and that's where to place your starting card. It has to be in one of the fields, not one of the villages. So let's say pink puts it up here, and blue, well, if you look at their hand, actually, you can see that they have um, two oranges. They need to sell oranges at Vanaza. So a good place might be to start harvesting some, some oranges. So let's place the blue card here. Finally, we have these most popular vendor cards. Once a player has filled up their fulfillment track for one of these villages, then they gain the most popular vendor, and this will give them bonus victory points. All right, I think we're ready to go. On your turn, you can perform up to three actions. You can move up to four spaces in a clockwise direction. You can draw one produce card. You can harvest some produce, or you can sell produce at a village market. Let's have a look and see what Pink would like to do. Let's, let's aim for these tomatoes here. I'm in a field where tomatoes are grown, but I don't have any tomato cards. What can I do about that? Well, I've got a couple of options as it goes. If I want to pick a tomato, I either have to discard one tomato card, Pomodori card, or two matching of anything. Okay? So I could potentially grab the Zucchini card as one action, discard a matching pair, and grab one tomato as my second action. Now yield me one tomato. Alternatively, I could pick up the two tomatoes as two actions. You can re conduct the same action more than once in your turn. And then as my third action, I could discard two tomato cards and pick up two tomatoes. One for each tomato card discarded. So let's do that. Let's grab the tomatoes. So my action number one, grab a piece of produce. Every time you grab a piece of produce and empty it, you have to refill from the draw pile here. So there's an option to pick up those. But no, I'm going to go with the tomatoes. I'll stick with those. Let me grab an olive. So I'm two actions in. Next action is I'm going to discard these two tomatoes and harvest two tomatoes. Put them on my, on my truck. You can only ever have four pieces of produce on your cart at any one time. So there is a maximum load. Now these are all going to fall off as I, I travel around. So put these on your fulfillment card in your, in your little cart. And that's turn over. They've taken three actions, now blue. So for blue player, let's, um, we could gather some more crops here, but let's, let's play these two oranges. Let's gather two oranges. So we're harvesting these. Another action you can take, as well as harvesting, is to move up to four places. And we're heading towards Bonanza we can. A movement is always clockwise. 
One, two, three, four. And we're following these roads. And now that we're at a village, we can sell any number of produce from our cart. We've only got two oranges, so that's all we're going to sell. If we had a, more produce, we could be selling all of it. Remember, we've most, at most we've got four. We could be selling all four. We could sell one, two, three, or four. And the price we sell it at is given by the dice here. So oranges, they sell for three lira. This is all three euros. This is, this is lira now. So we sell two oranges for three lira each. That's six lira. If we were selling any produce which didn't have a dice, we would only get one lira for it. So you can sell like uh, mushrooms or garlic here, even though there's no dice, but only one lira for each item. Now that we've sold some produce, we need to take the two oranges that we've sold and they go back on our fulfillment card. And we'll place them here at the NASA on this track. There's eight spots for each village, which means at most we can sell eight pieces of produce at each village. And if we're the first person to fill all eight slots for that particular village, then we grab the most popular vendor. And having sold it for six lira, we record this on the victory point track, which goes around the outside. So it's not so much victory points, but lira that we're trying to, we're trying to earn. So we move up to six. And then you might say, well, you know, why don't you just go around selling, selling zucchini at six? Because they're the, they're the highest thing. Why don't you just go around buying and selling the produce that's valued most highly? Well, yeah, that's a, a, a tactic. You could do that. But obviously there's a number of reasons why you shouldn't. Firstly, there's a limited supply. But secondly, that's only going to give you a limited number of victory points. The big victory points come from fulfilling these orders. So that's really where you want to focus your efforts. Okay, so there's three ways to win Lira. Selling produce, fulfilling orders, becoming the most popular vendor. Okay, that's blue turns complete. We harvested some crops, we moved, and then we sold our produce. That's three actions. So it's back to the pink player. First we're going to grab for action number one, the zucchini card from here. Refill. Next, we're going to discard a matching pair, our zucchini, and grab one grape. We've only got room for one more piece of produce, and I don't really want anything else from these three fields. So, as my third action, I'm going to move one, two spots, I think, two spots. Yeah, let's move round to the the final field. One, two. And it's back to blue. Okay, so blue's fulfilled this part of his order. But nothing else. We need to go and fetch some more produce. So the first action is to move off. I think we'll move over to this harvest space here. So that's one, two. So that's action number one. Let's grab Uva, the grapes. That's my second action. Yeah, we'll grab the zucchini card as well, and we've got a matching pair. Okay. That's my third action. Pink again. And we re refill. First thing Pink is going to do is harvest a piece of garlic. That's four pieces of produce now. And then next, so my second action is we're going to move one, two, and from here sell a tomato, I think. I'm going to grab a tomato, place it here on Manarola. Then I'm going to move up one as my final action. 
notice we sold tomatoes here. There's no red dye, so we just got one lira from that. So the pink's victory point token goes up to one lira. Now you may say, well, why did, why did you sell tomato there? That wasn't what you were trying to do. You wanted to sell tomatoes at Venaza. Okay, well, I've got another tomato. I can sell that there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play on a few turns and show you where we get to. We've now moved on a few more turns and I wanted to teach you the significance of these produce orders down here at the side of the board. Pink player has just finished her turn, she's just completed her third action and you can see she's got quite a few things on her fulfilment card here. In particular she's got some grapes here at Venaza and some fungi, some, some mushrooms here at Cornidia. Now at the end of your turn and only at the end of your turn, the very last thing you can do is you can have a look at these, these produce borders at the side of the board and say, well, have I, have I fulfilled any of those? Well, the pink player has. She has a grape and a mushroom here, and she's pretty close to finishing this one as well. Let me, um, let me take these up to the fulfillment board and you'll see what I mean. So if you look at the, um, the fulfillment card for the pink player and compare it to these cards, we need a grape and a mushroom here. We have a grape and a mushroom here. And for this one, we need pomodori, agli, and fungi here. So we're nearly, we're just a piece of mushroom away from, from completing this order. But we have already completed this order. And that means the pink player can now claim this at the end of her turn. You can only claim one per turn, so she's going to claim this one here. And it's worth 11 lira. Place it next to the fulfillment card. Move the victory point track up. 11, we're on 4, so we move to 15. And next, we need to draw a new card from here. But we look at it secretly. I'm not going to show blue. We look at it secretly. Now, we've got a choice. We can either take this into our hand as a secret produce order, just like our starting order. Or, we can place it here, and it's available for, for all players. And then we have the option, if we choose to place it here, of drawing one blindly to our hand. Okay, so remember this is always optional. If we choose to put this one in our hand, and perhaps we won't, but let's say we do put it in our hand, then another one comes down here and is available for everybody. Okay, but these are optional things. You don't have to do this. All right. And that's Cinque Terre. Now, the game plays out until one player has five orders here, or until Two of these fields are depleted. Remember too that you've got these things. If you fill them up, you're taking the MPV card. So if we manage to fill up uh, Corniglia here, we get we sell eight produce here, then we will get the MPV for Corniglia and we score 12 victory points. Once these are all gone, then also the game ends. So there's three different ways for the game to end. But when you reach the end game, you have to do a quick little deduction for any unfulfilled orders. So remember, you've got your starting orders and any ones that you've secretly added to your hand. If you haven't fulfilled them, then you're going to lose some points. And it's 30 minus any, that you, any bits you have fulfilled. All right, so that's, um, that's the game. I hope you enjoy it. It's something very different, and I love, I love the colourfulness, and it's great for the family. It's very much um, language independent as well, and there's a lot of fun to be hit, had here as a great family game and lots of different strategies as well thinking about which orders you're going to fulfill and so on and scuppering your opponents it's Rio Grande Games look it up hopefully this has helped you decide whether this is a good fit for you that's it see you next time bye for now